Hello everyone, and welcome back to Electrology. Today, we are diving deep into an essential topic in power systems, the double bus single breaker scheme, also referred to as the main come transfer bus scheme. This video will cover everything from its components to its operation, functions, and even its drawbacks. Make sure to stay tuned till the end to grasp all the details. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to support our channel. Let's get started. The double bus single breaker scheme is a configuration widely used in power systems. It involves two bus bars, four isolators or disconnect switches, one earth switch and one circuit breaker in each bay. But you might be wondering, what exactly is a bay? We'll explain this terminology shortly. Additionally, this scheme incorporates a trip transfer switch, TTS, and a bus coupler breaker, which play vital roles in its operation. In this scheme, two buses, bus 1 and bus 2, are used to supply feeders. Typically, bus 1 serves as the main bus, while bus 2 acts as both a main and transfer bus. This dual purpose of bus 2 gives the scheme its alternative name, Main Come Transfer Bus Scheme. But what exactly is a transfer bus? A transfer bus is a secondary bus to which any feeder can be connected through a transfer isolator, such as DS1D or DS2D. However, only one feeder can be connected to the transfer bus at any given time. This feature allows flexibility during maintenance and fault conditions. Let's break down the components of the double bus single breaker scheme. Main isolators. These are connected to bus 1 and bus 2. Examples include DS1A, DS1B, DS2A and DS2B. Load isolators. These are connected to the load end such as DS1C and DS2C. Transfer isolators. These, like DS1D and DS2D, connect the load directly to the transfer bus. Earth switch. This is connected on the load side of the load isolator, providing safety during maintenance. Each feeder with its associated switching devices is referred to as a bay. In our schematic, we have three bays. Feeder 1 bay, feeder 2 bay, and the bus coupler bay. The bus coupler bay, equipped with CB3, serves the critical purpose of linking bus 1 and bus 2. Under normal conditions, CB3 remains closed, ensuring seamless operation between the two buses. Under normal conditions, feeders are distributed between bus 1 and bus 2. For instance, feeder 1 might be connected to bus 1 with DS1A and DS1C closed, while DS1B and DS1D remain open. Circuit breaker CB1 is closed and the earth switch is open. Feeder 2 might be connected to bus 2 with DS2B and DS2C closed, while DS2A and DS2D remain open. Circuit breaker CB2 is closed and the earth switch is open. This configuration ensures balanced operation and flexibility. The transfer isolator plays a critical role, especially during maintenance. Suppose feeder 1 is connected to bus 1 and we need to perform maintenance on its circuit breaker, CB1. Instead of shutting down feeder 1, we can transfer it to bus 2. Here's the sequence of operations. Transfer all feeders from bus 2 to bus 1 one by one. Ensure bus 2 is charged through CB3 with its isolators DS3A and DS3B closed. Confirm all transfer isolators like DS2D are open. Set the TTS of CB1 to the inter position. Close transfer isolator DS1D. Sequentially open DS1A and DS1C to isolate CB1 from bus 1. Set the TTS of CB1 to the transfer position. This process ensures uninterrupted power supply while CB1 is under maintenance. The trip transfer switch, or TTS, is essential for transferring feeder protection. It has three positions. Normal, feeder protection is managed by its own breaker. Inter, intermediate state during transfer. Transfer, feeder protection shifts to the bus coupler breaker, CB3. This mechanism ensures the safety and reliability of the system during maintenance or fault conditions. The bus coupler breaker serves multiple purposes. It connects bus 1 and bus 2, allowing power transfer. During a fault, it isolates the faulty bus while maintaining the healthy bus. It protects feeders connected to the transfer bus through transfer isolators. One limitation of this scheme is that only one feeder can be transferred to the transfer bus at a time. This means only one breaker can be isolated for maintenance without affecting the load. In contrast, the one and half breaker scheme offers greater flexibility, allowing multiple breakers to be taken under maintenance. 
That concludes our detailed discussion on the double bus single breaker scheme. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth content. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. And if you want to support us further, hit the thanks or join button. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.